the chant just now, how inconstant are fabrications. The nature is to rise and pass away. Arising they cease, their stilling is peace. All animals, all living beings die, have died, will die. I have no doubt about that. That's what the chant said. There's a poem in the canon where the Buddha talks about how rich and poor, young and old, men and women, all keep dying. That's the nature of things that are born. They, they stay for a while and they pass away. In the poem it says, just as every pot made by a potter is bound to break at some point, there comes a point where we can't stand the body any longer. All the elements in the body have to go their separate ways. And the question is, where are we going to go? But what do we have? We have our actions. We have our karma. That was the Buddha's insight on the night of his awakening. This is what makes the difference in, in how we're reborn and how we die. And it can also make the difference in whether we can stop or not. When you reach the point where you said you've had enough, as the Buddha said, it's been from an inconceivable beginning that we've been going on from life to life. And you want it to be an inconceivable length of time ahead of you, or would you like to put an end to it? Because when you put an end to it, as the Buddha said, there's stilling is peace. There's a true happiness that comes when you pull out of the whole, the whole cycle. In the meantime, you try to do it and learn how to manage the cycle in a skillful way. Because your actions really are important. When you go, you can't take your material possessions, you can't take your body. All you can take are your actions as you're done. So make sure you do good actions. It's like packing your bag, getting ready to travel. Pack only the good and useful things. As for things that will simply weigh you down, why bother? When you can think in this way, it's a lot easier to let go of the things that create trouble for yourself and create trouble for other people. Meanwhile, we think of those who've gone, gone on ahead of us. People we used to help in the past, and how are we going to help them now? Well, we help them by doing good and dedicating the merit to them. And if they know and they appreciate it, then they gain merit too. And that lifts their spirits as it lifts ours. So that was one of the amazing parts about the Buddha's awakening. He took the mystery out of death, because up to that point people were arguing back and forth whether death was followed by rebirth or what kind of rebirth or whether it was followed by annihilation, all kinds of questions. But he saw through the things that had kept people from seeing before. And so for us, even though we may not know his knowledge is true, still we understand that if we are convinced in it, we're going to behave in a lot more skillful ways than if we don't. And at the very least, we keep ourselves safe. And then we can negotiate these issues with a lot more finesse and a lot more skill. This is why the Buddha has us think about death every day, not to get us depressed, but to remind ourselves, okay, you have one more day, or at least maybe you have this one more breath, to do something good. So do something good with it. Don't just breathe in and out and let it go, let the opportunity go. Because it doesn't come back. You've got the opportunity now. We're living in a place where it is possible to practice the Dharma, to hear the Dharma. So take advantage of that fact. That way when the time comes to go, you'll be prepared. And in the meanwhile, you keep sending on good things to the people who have gone ahead of you. It makes the, the cycle a lot less scary. But we have to realize it's, it's only when we can totally put an end to our participation in the cycle, that's when we'll really be free, we'll really be secure. But in the meantime, try to develop as many skillful qualities in the mind as you can, because that's what you have to depend on.